So chapter five is our first chapter where we're uh, truly getting into uh, the geometric dimensioning and tolerancing aspect of uh, engineering drawing. Um, prior to this, chapters one through four were really focusing on dimensioning review, um, kind of uh, setting the stage definitely for uh, GD&T, but also reminding you of um, the different uh, requirements and applications and, and guidelines and rules for dimensioning, which are very critical. I don't want to understate that. They're very critical for uh, this way forward into geometric dimensioning and tolerancing. A lot of the GD&T rules can only be applied properly with the proper application of the fundamental dimensioning uh, guidelines and rules. Um, so that's something to, to keep in mind. You might want to uh, you know, keep the, the dimensioning review uh, presentations on hand when you're doing some of the assignments. All right, so let's get into um, chapter five then. So we'll start off with uh, a very important definition um, that, that kind of sets the, sets the overall picture here. <clears throat> and then a little bit of a discussion uh, of, of what's going to be happening in the chapters uh, from chapter five on. Um, so what are tolerances, right? That's really the focus of this class is how do we specify and control tolerances on a drawing. Um, tolerances are defined as the permissible variations in the specified form, size, or location of individual features of a part from that shown on the drawing. Okay, so you probably have an idea what tolerances are, but this is a very good definition because it really sets um, sets kind of the the ground rules that we're going to be talking about. So first of all, let's let's break this down. <clears throat> tolerances are permissible variations, right? So when we have tolerances on a drawing, that is the designer saying that the size or form or location of of these features that have the tolerance dimensions are allowed to vary within that tolerance. So when you see the plus minus tolerance, when you see the limit dimensions, whatever form the tolerances take on, those are acceptable, permissible variations. The designer is saying that the part will function within that range of sizes. So then let's break down what we're talking about when we talk about tolerances, because there are really four different types of tolerances, okay? Um, and we'll start at the bottom, the foundational level, okay? Uh, we'll call these level four tolerances. By the way, th this is not specified in your book. So this is kind of another way I, f I find. So I find this is a another way to frame or to understand uh, tolerances. So a level four tolerance is a size tolerance. That's your run of the mill, plus minus tolerance, limit dimension, all the stuff that you've probably seen up to this point. Okay, those are the foundational level um, uh, tolerances. If we want to refine our tolerances, that is add another layer of control, Okay, then we move to layer level three. A level three tolerance would be form tolerances. Okay, and that's the subject of the of this chapter. So we're at level three right now when what we're talking about. So those are an additional level of control above size. Okay, going above form. So again, adding another level of control above form, so we have size at the ground level, form, and then level two is the orientation tolerances. And then finally, at the very top of our pyramid, all right, the last level that we can get to is level one, and those are positional tolerances, okay? Each level, each tolerance level, is a further refinement of the prior one. So positional tolerances refine orientation tolerances, which refine form tolerances, which refine, refine size tolerances. 
Okay. So again, this isn't something that is, is spelled out in your book. Uh, I've picked this up from other books that, that, um, that I've studied GD and T with. And I, I, at least it helps me to kind of understand how, um, tolerances are applied and, and what they mean. All right. So, um, we're focusing on right now level, uh, excuse me, level two tolerances, level one tolerances, size tolerances we discussed in, uh, the la really the last couple of chapters. Um, so, and, and that should be familiar to you. You should have seen that in, in other classes. Um, you probably saw it in other drawings. All right. Um, so a size tolerance is the amount of variation on individual features. Okay. So if we look at the drawing, right on the left hand side, we have a drawing and the top surface here is a dimension from the bottom surface, um, of between 1.5 inches and two inches, right? This is represented as a limit dimension, but it really doesn't matter. And what that means is that this top surface, right? can vary within that size range, right? So we could have a surface that looks like this, you know, kind of, you know, uh, undulating up and down and kind of rough and whatever. But as long as it doesn't break the two inch barrier and go below the 1.5 inch bar barrier, that is an acceptable surface, okay? Doesn't matter how you know, wavy it gets as long as none of the waves pierce above two and below 1.5. Now, we can also, um, and this is a carryover from the last chapter, we can also um, refer to the 1.5 size as the least material condition. And we can refer to the two inch size as the maximum material condition. All right, these are concepts, terms, that you're going to see over and over again, so you need to get comfortable with understanding uh, what what they mean. All right, so that's so those are size tolerances. Now, when we go to form tolerances, this is a level two tolerance, so it refines that. So if we take the the same drawing, right? So we still have the limit dimensions of 1.5 to two, right? But now we're going to refine this top surface with a, in this case, this is a flatness tolerance, which is a form tolerance. Okay. Um, and we're going to apply a 0.16 flatness tolerance to the top surface. Okay. So what that means is that uh, we still have the Least material condition, the 1.5, and the maximum material condition, 2.00, that the surface, um, uh, the, the actual measured surface on the part cannot break, right? But now we're refining or controlling the waves on this back, uh, on this top surface so that they must be within a 0.16. And you can kind of think of this as a sandwich. Like point one, these two lines are point one six uh, inches apart, and the waves of that surface must lie within those two uh, lines. Okay. Now it's important to note here that these two lines, the point one six flatness tolerance lines, um, are not held parallel to the bottom surface, you know, they can be at an angle provided that they do not exceed two inches or go below 1.5 inches. Okay. So this is a refinement of the 1.5 to two, right? It refines that we still have that limit and the surface can move up and down. But now we're kind of controlling what you what you would say is we're controlling the flatness of that surface. So we don't want all these big waves in there. We want to say, yeah, you still got to be between 1.5 and 2, but I want this surface to not be so wavy. So boom, there we go. Okay. And notice that the 0.16 is less than 0.5 right? This is a tolerance of 0.5. The size tolerance is 0.5. The flatness tolerances need to be less than that, right? Otherwise, there's no point in having the flatness tolerance. 
So 0.16 is less than 0.5. <clears throat> All right, so uh, a couple other, um, th these next couple of slides are gonna be um, some of the rules and guidelines for applying form tolerances. So as I said, form tolerances refine size tolerances. Size tolerances permit form variations equal to the size tolerance. So as I said, if, if your form tolerance is not less than the size tolerance, then the size tolerance is the form tolerance. There, you know, there's no point in having a form tolerance in there. If the form variations permitted by the size tolerances are acceptable, no additional form tolerances are necessary, as I just said. If allowable form variation is less than the size tolerance, form tolerances may be applicable, okay? Form tolerances only control variations on individual surfaces, right? Individual surfaces, not features of size, but individual surfaces. So therefore they do not control relationships between features. Using size tolerances to control form is not always the best approach, right? So if, you, if you're thinking here, let's go back to this one. If you're thinking, well, um, okay, we want a flatness tolerance of 0.16. Why don't we just make this, um, instead of 1.5 to 2, make it 1.5 to 1.66, right? Why don't we just put the flatness tolerances and just put it right into the size tolerances and then we don't need this. Well, think about what that does. That This part is acceptable if it varies. That That is to say it works in the design. It works in the mechanism or machine that you're designing here. If the size varies between 1.5 and 2. If you replace this in this case, half inch size tolerance with a 0.16 size tolerance. Now, all of a sudden, you're going to have a lot more scrap parts, right? Because you're going to be throwing away a lot of parts that aren't good anymore. You're going to have to readjust your machining. If this is a machine part, you readjust your machining. The machining may take more time. There may be secondary processes involved, okay? So um, it's going to be more expensive, more time consuming, and you're going to produce more scrap if you just take this 0.16 and throw it in here and change the size tolerance to 0.16. So that's generally a bad idea. Okay. So as I said, using size tolerances to control form is not always the best approach. It's expensive, it's difficult, and it's overly restrictive. Right. The part works when it has a half inch size tolerance. We don't need to tighten that down all right flatness toler the flatness tolerance um, is uh, a zone made up of two parallel plates okay so the flatness tolerant zone is two parallel plates and we can see them in the in the bottom figure right here we can see the the two blue lines are the two parallel plates so here we have a flatness tolerance applied to the top surface, the flatness tolerance is three thousandths of an inch, okay? Notice the size tolerance. What is the size tolerance here? Well, the size tolerance is plus 0 0.005 and minus 0 0.005, or ten thousandths of an inch. Don't forget that if it's a plus minus tolerance, that means it can go up five thou and down five thou, which means the total tolerance is ten thou, all right? Um, so, um, so we have a form tolerance, a flatness tolerance, in this case of 3,000. So what that means is we have, we established two parallel plates, two parallel planes that are separated by three thousandths of an inch, all right? And the surface in, in question, the surface that we're aiming to control here, this top surface, may not deviate above or below those two parallel lines separated by three thousandths of an inch all right the um the the two parallel uh blue lines in this case may not exceed go above or below the ten thou size tolerance so these these two parallel blue lines can float 
within the maximum size of 0 0.505 and the minimum size of 0.495. As long as they lie within that range, then they're acceptable. Okay, by the way, rule number one, remember rule number one says that if the part is produced at its maximum material condition, it must have perfect form. So that basically means that if you make this bar at 0 0.505 inches thick, there can be no uh, acceptable, you know, there's no room for flatness uh, tolerance. It, there's no, because you're at the top already, right? You're at the top already. All right. So uh, a couple more guidelines. Size tolerances should be used to control the allowable size variation on the part. Okay. If the needed size tolerance adequately controls the form, then no additional tolerances are required. So um, this is something that we're going to talk about over and over again. Um, don't throw on geometric dimensioning and tolerances just because you can or just because it looks good, or just because you want to add another layer of control. If the control, let's go back to this one right here, whoops. If the if the plus or minus five thou is acceptable for flatness, then that's it, don't, don't add anything, right? Unless you need an additional flatness control. Uh, if form control is needed to a degree greater than the size tolerance, then form tolerances may be applied. All right, so um, let's let's talk about the different types of form tolerances. So there's four types of form tolerances. We have straightness, flatness, circularity, and cylindricity. Okay, straightness and flatness are related. Okay, because they control line or plane elements, planar elements. Circularity and cylindricity are related because uh, circularity controls circular elements and cylindricity controls cylindrical elements. Okay. So uh, the feature control frame for a form tolerance, regardless of the type of form tolerance, regardless of straightness, flatness, circularity, and cylindricity, the feature control frame, what this thing is right here, has only two components, two, excuse me, two compartments. We have the tolerance um, symbol here, which would be straightness, flatness, circularity, and cylindricity. And we have the tolerance value. In this case, it's a diameter 8 thou. No datum features are used here to reference. No datum features. That would be right over here on the right-hand side. You'll see those in the in the other uh, geometric dimensioning and tolerancing after the form tolerances. But form tolerances do not have a datum reference. It's important. Form tolerances don't have a datum reference. Um, so let's look at a couple of examples here. By the way, sorry for the uh, fuzzy nature of this. I, I enlarged these pictures so that you can see them better and they they, they kind of got a little bit fuzzy here. Um, so here we have a straightness tolerance applied um, to a feature of size, right? We're going to talk about that. Um, here's the tolerance value. Or excuse me, the tolerance symbol, tolerance symbol. The diameter symbol can be used when applicable and the tolerance symbol, the, the, the diameter symbol can only be applied when we're controlling a feature of size, okay? Um, and we have a material condition modifier in this example. And again, a material condition modifier may only be applied to features of size. In this other example here, we have a flatness control with three thousandths tolerance, right? No maximum material condition, no material condition modifier, no datum, or excuse me, no diameter symbol, and never any datum references. Um, RFS is always assumed if there's no material condition modifier present. So if we don't have that circle M here, then it's assumed to be RFS regardless of feature size. By the way, which rule is that? That is rule number two, right? Rule number two says that if no material condition modifier um, is, is shown in the feature control frame, um, then the uh, tolerance applies 
regardless of feature size. All right, speaking of material, uh, material condition modifiers, uh, again, rule number two states that RFS is always assumed. If you want to apply the tolerance at MMC or at LMC, then you need to include the circle M and the circle L. These are only applicable to features of size. Features of size, we'll talk about this over and over and over again, but let me state it right here again. Features of size are features that have thickness or diameter. Okay? So a hole is an example of a feature of size. A cylinder is an example of a feature of size. All right? Um, they are not allowed when form tolerances are, are applied to features. Okay? Um, only, this is, this is key for this chapter, only straightness and flatness can be applied to features of size. Not um, uh, circularity and cylindricity. Okay, only straightness and flatness. And we'll look at examples of when those are applied. All right, so let's look at some examples now. Um, applying, how do we apply, that is to say, how do we put the feature control frame on the part on the drawing? How do we actually draw it on the drawing? Okay, so we can apply it to features or surfaces, right? So it, these are not features of size. These are um, the, uh, in, in this case, the form tolerance applied to individual features, right? And so we can, first of all, we can create an extension line, right? And then put it above or below on top of the extension line or attached to the extension line. Or we can point to the surface with a leader and attach the leader right at the midway point of the feature control frame. All right, so this is applying a form control to a feature, excuse me, to a surface. Here's another example. This is a circularity tolerance and we're applying that to a cylindrical feature now keep in mind, this is still a not, we're applying this to a surface, not a feature of size here, but a surface. Now, how do we apply the form tolerance to a feature of size? Well, in this case, all right, a feature of size, we, we have two options here. We can either hang it underneath the corresponding size dimension, right? This is a size dimension. The size of this hole is diameter one plus or minus five thou. And so we can place this under, or actually we can place it to the right of also, but generally it goes under the size tolerance or the size dimension, okay? So this is a straightness tolerance applied with a tolerance value of diameter 0 0.006, 6 thou at maximum material condition. The alternative here is we attach it to an arrow from that size dimension, All right? Now notice there are differences here and these are hard and fast. This is not, you know, something that is just, well, this is a guideline and so you can do it this, any of these ways, no. Okay, this is kind of the well, maybe the, the first instance of where GD&T gets very, very specific and very, very rule bound. Okay, features of size must be applied um, in this manner. Features, that is non-size features, surfaces must be applied in this manner. Okay. All right, form requirements from size limits. So first of all, uh, remember, we talked about rule number one. We could call this the envelope principle. And what that means is that we have perfect form at MMC. When the part is produced at its maximum material condition, then it must have perfect form. Form meaning it can't have a wavy surface, right? No, no form restrictions at LMC, right? At least material condition, of course, you know, you're going to have uh, much more variation other than size limits, right? We're talking about form uh, control here. 
Parts must fit within an envelope of perfect form and be within the size limits. And that's that's kind of a tool to understand rule number one a little bit better. And we'll look at some examples here. Okay. Exceptions are free state variations, stock materials, and you must include a note with a circle I. The I, circle I stands for um, independency or independent. All right. So. Um, what does this perfect form boundary effects um, have on flat surfaces? All right, so if we look at this, this is the drawing, right? And we can see we have a size tolerance here of one plus or minus 10 thou, right? So a total tolerance of 20 thou, right? Plus 10 thou minus 10 thou means a total tolerance of 20 thou, all right? So um, we can have the part can can vary the maximum size is 1.01 .01 and the minimum size is 0.99 so if we make this part at its maximum size 1.01 .01, right then it must fit within this this is the perfect form boundary it has to fit within this shape right here you can think of it as um the the kind of like a slot that you're trying to slide it into and the slot the dimensions for the slot are equal to the maximum material size 1.010 so if we produce a part at its mmc size then it's just going to fit within that it can't go any any more above it um of course going below it is fine provided you don't break the 0.99 minimum size Looking at that same concept with a cylindrical feature, the envelope of perfect form in this case would be a hole with a diameter of the MMC size here. What is the MMC size of a cylinder? Well, it's the maximum material size, 1.010, 1.010. So if we have a hole with a diameter of 1.010, this pin, has to be able to go through it. So we can have a wavy pin as long as the waves don't exceed 1.010. .010. We can have a pin that's fat with a diameter no greater than 1.010. .010. Okay, that's the envelope of perfect form. And that's rule number one. All right, so let's go on to some specific examples of our four types of form tolerances. Straightness, flatness, circularity, and cylindricity. Okay, so first up is straightness. Straightness controls the straightness of surface elements or the derived median line for a feature of size. Now, let me let me just kind of paraphrase. Derived median line for a feature of size is a fancy way of saying the center line. Okay, or the the mid plane if you're talking about rectangular features, but basically it's the center line. Okay. So we can control the straightness of a surface, whether it's a cylindrical uh, feature or a flat surface, right? And cylindrical could be a hole or a cylinder. The tolerant zone are line elements. Notice that we're not saying planes, but line elements. Or the derived meridian line. That is to say the axis. Okay, center line, axis. All right, so let's look at some examples. So um, applying or controlling the straightness of a flat surface. All right, so here we have um, a block. Um, it varies from 0.875 plus, plus 5 thou to 875 minus 5 thou or 880 to 870 in uh, inches. And we control the we want to control this top surface right here with a flatness excuse me a straightness tolerance of five thou so five thou is less than the total size tolerance so this is acceptable so what does this mean well it means that the surface can vary between 870 and 880 but the waviness of, of the surface the flatness of the surface may not deviate more than five thou. So we have two parallel lines that are separated by five thou, right? 
the the tolerance the straightness tolerances um, only applied in one direction. Uh, how do we know which direction? Well, you got to look at the 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 view that the straightness is applied to. So there is no straightness tolerance applied in this direction in the what would be the right side view. Okay. So notice that we can have uh, waviness um, between 870 and 880. There's no limitation here. But what we're talking about is controlling individual line elements. So to apply the straightness of a flat surface properly, we need to select the correct view. Okay, so again, um, uh, uh, applying it in this view versus applying it in this view uh, control two completely different things. They only control line elements. Rule number one applies. We're only talking about individual features, right? Surfaces, not features of size. And there are no related surface controls. Parallelism or perpendicularity does not apply. That is, what that means is that these, these two parallel lines that are separated by five thousandths, the tolerant zone, is, is free to float between 870 and 880. What that means is that um, it can move up at an angle, provided it doesn't go below 870 and above 880. All right, so at an angle, it could be, you know, whatever it needs to capture that surface. All right, now applying straightness to a cylindrical surface. Same idea here, right? Um, so how do we apply it? Well, notice we apply it with a leader or an extension line. We're talking about a cylindrical surface not a feature of size, so nothing here. And what that means is we're controlling uh, the surface, right? So again, we have an 870 to 880 diameter size range, 870 minimum, 880 maximum material condition. The surface in question, question the cylindrical surface, may not exceed 6th thou straightness tolerance, all right? And so there's your parallel planes that are six thou apart that are allowed to float between the 870 and the 880. So we're controlling, what are we controlling here? The waviness of the cylindrical surface. Okay, so these are two variations. You'll see these over and over again when we talk about uh, holes and cylinders, but this is, this is what we might call the dog bone look. Okay, this is called the dog bone. And this is the wavy uh, pin, right? Because we can have different, you know, shapes to a pin that has an 870 to 880 diameter uh, size tolerance. Um, and the pin can be wavy, right? So it has, so think of the pin as a minimum diameter of 870 but the waviness makes it uh, kind of extend out to the 880 diameter, right? And then we have the dog bone where we actually have variation on the inside or the, the middle part of 870 and on the outside parts at 880. By the way, total size tolerance here of 10,000 again. All right, so um, some rules on um, straightness of a cylindrical surface. Application of feature control frame dictates whether straightness is applied to a surface or a feature of size. So be careful how you apply it. Rule number one applies. It controls surface elements, not axis, okay, or center lines. Surface elements. All right, now moving on to straightness of a feature of size. Okay, so here's the same idea, straightness, but we're applying it to a feature of size. All right, so in this case, we're applying it to a the diameter, the size uh, of a cylinder, a diameter, right? So in this case, the feature control frame must be associated with the size dimension, right? So that's, we're hanging it right below the size dimension hanging it right below the size dimension. Or we're attaching it to the um, dimension line. This is called the dimension line, right? 
This controls the axis or the center plane, the axis for cylindrical features, center plane for rectangular features. The new name for this is derived median line. So the derived median line, um, you know, it, it what happened was in the in the old uh, GD&T standard, they used the term axis and center plane, and that was misleading because um, in reality, what you're doing is you're deriving the median line from the actual part, all right? The axis and center plane are only theoretical on drawings. The derived median line is what you actually measure in the actual real part. Hence, hence it's derived, it's derived from actual measurements. And it's not a axis anymore, it's a median line. All right, so um, straightness of the derived median line is not restricted by rule number one. Okay, so first thing, it's not restricted by rule number one. Measurements made at any point in the cross section must be within the size limits, right? So we still have to obey the size limits. Material condition modifiers apply. All right, so let's look at some examples here. All right, so here we have a cylinder, right? And we have a size tolerance of 875 plus or minus 3,000. So MMC size is 878. LMC size is 872. And we have a straightness of a feature of size tolerance applied to this with a tolerance or a diameter of or tolerance of diameter uh, 10 thou, 0 0.010. All right. First thing you'll notice is what is the size tolerance? Total size tolerance is 6 thou. What is the Straightness tolerance, 10 thou. Whoa, wait a second. What is that? Well, remember, rule number one doesn't apply in this case. All right, so this is acceptable. All right, so what does this mean in practice? Well, it means that, again, if we look at a worst case scenario for the pin, all right, ignore the straightness tolerance. Worst case scenario for a pin, the pin is an 878 diameter pin. It's LMC size, or excuse me, um, uh, it's MMC size, 878, and it can bend 888. Now, wait a second. Where did they get that 888 from? I thought the maximum material size was 878, right? 875 plus 3,000. Well, 878 plus... 10 thou is 888. So what we're seeing here is the combination of the size tolerance and the form tolerance. All right, so we're adding those two together here. This is a positive feature, so that's why we add it. All right, so basically what this is saying that the pin, this shaft or pin, can bend so that it fits within a envelope of a uh, size envelope. Let's call it a size. I don't want to call it envelope perfect form because rule number one doesn't apply, but um, it fits within a size envelope of 0.888 equal to the MMC size plus the tolerance. Okay. So what this breaks down is like I just said, straightness tolerance is applied RFS, right? How do we know that? Well, there's no maximum material modifier. So that means regardless of the size of the feature, this is the tolerance. Regardless of the size being 878, 877, 876, 875, 874, 873, 872, regardless of that size, this is the tolerance, okay? Um, this uh, cylinder MMC is 878. The straightness tolerance is uh, 10 thou. It's a positive feature of size. That is, it's a cylinder, not a hole. So the virtual condition size, this is, this is something we're gonna talk about a lot. Virtual condition size is 878 plus 10 thou, okay, or 888. The virtual condition is the combined effect of the MMC size and the applied tolerance. Virtual condition is a constant. Well, in this case, you know, that's a typo. In this case, the virtual condition is not a constant. Okay. Um, 
Uh, virtual condition, as I, as I just said, virtual condition is, is, um, let me back up a second. All right. Um, virtual condition is a constant, but virtual condition is not defined by regardless of feature size or RFS conditions. So the typo is this term right here, virtual condition size. This is not really the virtual condition size, right? It is just the um, size of the of the part combining the um, size tolerance and the straightness tolerance. Okay, so that's this. These three bullets down here are completely accurate. This name right here that I'm using, virtual condition size, that's not so accurate. Okay, so um, just remember that. That's it shouldn't be called virtual condition size. All right, so let's look at another example here. So we have a straightness of a feature size, and we'll look at the, the, the calculations now, okay? So now we have straightness of a feature of size, right? A pin, again, diameter 125 plus or minus 10 thou. Uh, we have a straightness tolerance of 7 thou applied at maximum material condition. So what does that mean? Well, that means that when the pin is at its maximum material size, this is the tolerance. What is the tolerance when the pin is not at its maximum material size? Well, we got to get out the, our little calculator here. Okay. So when the pin is at its maximum material size, which is 1.26, right? 125 plus 10. We get a 7 thou acceptable tolerance on the derived median line when at MMC. Okay, MMC of the shaft plus the tolerance gives us our virtual condition size. So this um, is our virtual condition. Whoops, I'm sorry. This is our virtual condition size, 1.267, 1.267. How do we get that? The maximum material size, 126, plus the tolerance, 7 thou, 1.267, virtual condition. All right, so what does that mean uh, for the tolerance um, outside of the uh, outside of the MMC size. Well, so basically what this does is this gives us a variable tolerance. So if we produce a pin at a size of 1.26, the allowable tolerance, straightness tolerance is 7 thou. If we produce a pin at 1.259, the allowable tolerance is Eight thou. Now, where do we get that from? Well, the virtual condition is 1.267. All right. So how do we go from 1.259 to 1.267? We add eight thou. 1.258 plus nine thou is 1.267. 1.242 plus 0 0.025 thou is 1.267. So notice each one of these, this number on the left plus this number on the right equals 1.267 plus equals 1.2. So that's where the 1.267, the virtual condition size is considered a constant. Okay. 1.240 plus 0 0.027 equals 1.267. Right, and so there we go. Now we can do the same for a negative feature, a hole. Here we have a hole, 0.75 plus or minus 6 thou, with a toler straightness tolerance of diameter 0 0.005, 5 thou, applied at MMC size, applied at maximum material condition. So this means that we have a virtual condition of, well, what's the MMC size of a hole? It's the minimum size. 744. What is the tolerance at MMC? 5. So for a negative feature, we take the MMC size and we subtract the tolerance at MMC. So 744 minus 5 thou is 739. That's the virtual condition size. That becomes the constant. And so to, uh, to figure out the allowable straightness tolerance at sizes of the whole, other than MMC size, 744, 
right? So at 744, we have a 5,000 tolerance, uh, allowable tolerance. At 745, 745 minus 6,000 is 739. So we have a 6,000 tolerance. All the way down to the uh, LMC size of the hole is 756 minus 0 0.017 equals 739. All right, and that gives us our uh, allowable tolerance range. Okay, another example, this is just a metric uh, application, all right? And, and this one, you can see uh, what we would consider the envelope of perfect form, right? And this is at a diameter of 1604. Now, where'd that come from? Well, it's the MMC size, 16 plus 40 thou. Again, why is it plus? Because it's a positive feature plus positive. So the pin can be bent and still get through this slot, this hole, right? The pin may not exceed a size tolerance of 1589 to 16, right? But the combined effect of the straightness tolerance and the size tolerance gives us an effective virtual condition size of 1604. Okay. So now you may want to, this, this formula is, is described in your textbook, but it's not explicitly written out. So this may be something that you want to print to keep with you when you're doing your homework and application problems, but the virtual condition calculation for an MMC condition, for a positive feature, the MMC size of the feature plus the geometric tolerance at MMC is equal to the virtual condition. For a negative feature, i.e. a hole, the MMC size of the hole minus the geometric tolerance at MMC is equal to the virtual condition. Positive feature, cylinder, shaft, negative feature, hole. The bonus tolerance is a term that we use to describe the difference in the MMC size minus the produced size. So what it's actually made at. All right, that's called your bonus tolerance. All right, so um, that concludes chapter five. I will um, do some examples from the book, some some worked examples from the book, and I'll upload those to... Um, to our YouTube channel and to uh, Canvas so you can have some further uh, help with working out some of these problems. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye.